Welcome back to Hannity. Another day has passed, and the Reverend Al Sharpton is yet to apologize after one of the guests on his program called me a paid assassin of African Americans. However, the Reverend did make another ridiculous and false claim about yours truly during his radio show today. Let's get you up to speed. What is interesting to me about uh, those on the right is they want to have a limited discussion. I'm prepared as I know you are and others, to discuss all of it, from responsibility right. to what is wrong in terms of equality. They only want to discuss responsibility. So why do they want a limited discussion? And why do they want to choose who can be in the discussion? You know, one of the things that I've been uh, even uh, uh, criticized for, I've had Bill O'Reilly, Sean Hannity, and all of them to the National Action Network Convention. They all of a sudden don't want to talk to a certain of us. We're hucksters. Well, why do they come to hucksters' conventions and deal with hucksters' affairs? I mean, it's, it's, it's so ludicrous that they want to decide. We'll decide what we're going to talk about. We'll decide who's in the discussion, but you guys are being divisive. You know, it, it, it's so c clear and apparent that they don't really want to have a true and honest discussion. Reverend, I went there. I discussed with you, debated you, and here I am today. Here with reaction to this much more, Fox News contributor Michelle Malkin. I got a question. You think Al, jo Al, Al Sharpton's ever created a job with all this activism? Has he prevented a life from being taken with all this uh, activism? Did, has he united anybody? Has he has solved any problems among any groups over the years that you know of, Michelle? Al Sharpton has blood on his hands. He's ruined lives. He's been one of the worst purveyors of racial divisiveness and hate in my lifetime. And it's—how can you expect an ounce of uh, honor from a man who doesn't have it? Uh, certainly, he's not going to go out of his way to try and defend yours or to be a stand-up guy. I love you like a brother, Sean, and I was very dismayed when you made that decision, and I know you made it out of good faith to attend the National Action Network. But this guy is a shakedown artist who hates cops, who hates whites, uh, who hates Jews, who has stoked uh, his rent a mob to murder Yankel Rosenbaum, to destroy the life of Stephen Pagonis when he lied about Tawana Brawley, and who has done nothing but foment the, foment the very kind of anger that he is now accusing you, a once quote unquote friend of. And I think the lesson here is something that I have tried tirelessly to remind all conservatives. If you get in a snake pit, you will be bit. And conservatives have been far too nice to these people in a good faith effort to try and have honest race relations. You can't with, ha with somebody who is a demagogue and who is evil. You know, um, maybe you're right. Maybe I made a mistake, and and I'm willing to. Uh, I, I, but I, I've got to tell you, in especially the first debate, and we aired it here on Fox. I confronted mm -hmm. him with all his comments about, you know, for a Jewish man to pin his yarmulke on backwards and the white interloper comment that he made uh, at Freddy's at 125th Street, which resulted in deaths. Yes. Um, and, and you know what? I've, I'm going to say to him, if he, this is a battle he wants to fight every day, I'm going to remind everybody, not of one isolated incident, but of a history of vitriol out of his mouth, for example. I'm tired of the Mac and You ain't nothing. You a punk. <laughs> now come on, do something. Black chicken fries in the universe. <laughs> and we gonna go buy some Colonel Sanders chicken. <laughs> then the channel been coming in, throw some hot dudes in the and dip it down. And you stand by and buy that. <laughs> go read and sell us watermelon. <laughs> we need watermelon all our lives. And they gonna come cut it up, put it in a bucket with a rubber band around it. <laughs> We learned to admire them, but they knew to admire us. We 
if it wasn't so sad and incendiary, it, it would almost be like a Saturday Night Live skit. It's so over the top. It's chilling is what it is, because in an era where we're supposed to take Martin Luther King's words to heart about judging people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin, all this man has done is enrich himself by fomenting more racial division. And it should be known that in addition to that long string in history of racial hate and demagoguery, that the National Atwer Action Network itself is nothing more than a shakedown vehicle to buy legitimacy. And you have the fact that everyone from President George Bush to Newt Gingrich to Al Gore to every Democratic presidential candidate uh, in the 2008 election and preceding it has kissed the ring of this race charlatan. And now he has reinvented himself. He thinks he can lose weight, put pancake makeup on, and all of a sudden he's respectable. You do that, Sean, and you remind people every day of where this man came from and warn people not to make the mistake of being well, an enabler so, of Al Sharpton, but be a disabler of his demagoguery. Just so I've you know, I've tried Michelle, to do it as much as, as often over the last 20 years, and I know you have too, Sean. I brought those tapes with me when I debated him. I had, yes. those, I had those loaded up and ready to go, and I confronted him on each and every one of those issues, which I don't know if anyone yes. else has done that. Um, and we've got the tape. We can go back to that one day. W what do you make of the fact that NBC News Tom Brokaw, Matt Lauer, the $25 million man, uh, Brian Williams, he is now a host on their news channel. What do you make yes, of that? that that's right, and that's where this debate needs to shift now. Uh, as I have said, and so many of our friends have said in the conservative media watchdog, dog world, newsbusters, and media research council have been great watchdogs of this demagogue. It is up to corporate media, the people who are always paying lip service to diversity and tolerance, to finally hold themselves accountable for their own enabling. And if they won't do it, then viewers and people of good faith who believe Believe in honest racial relations have to do it. Call them to the carpet. Take action. You're not going to get an apology, but this is a moment, a turning point to make this man responsible. All right, Michelle Malkin, thanks so much for being with us.